My name is Brendan Ritchie, and I am doing a little something I'm calling AI Focus. While in town, that town being Orlando, Florida, for the IT Nation Connect Global Conference, I'm catching up with a whole bunch of industry experts to talk about all things AI. You're going to learn about the tools they use and the coolest things they've done with them, and where they think this AI revolution is going. Let's jump into it. Favorite AI tool uh, or tools, and the best things you've done with them? Yeah, I think uh, you already know the answer, certainly, to one of them. Yeah. I've been playing around with Lovable for, for, for quite a while now. And, and to be honest, it's built some, some really interesting things. For the uninitiated, Lovable is? Lovable is a vibe coding app. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a bunch of them around, but Lovable for me is, um, has been really awesome to be able to create apps quickly mm -hmm. that actually have a really good user interface and uh, it'll look great. Because certainly what I see when I look one of the biggest adoption, adoption barriers when you're building stuff is apps that are hard to use and clunky and yeah you know so i, I think mobile is really great because it allows you to create really easy to use applications really quickly and stuff that was taking months and we're not doing it in, in days i think there's actually a pretty good story there uh, didn't you have a fairly hefty budget put aside to actually create the app you then created in a weekend yeah so we were talking about building a um uh, a budget uh, so technology roadmap application and we initially had put about a $75,000 development cost against it internally. Um, I went home one night and I thought, what if I could do this in, in Lovable? <laughs> what if I didn't talk to my wife or child for the weekend? Yeah. Uh, that was a Wednesday night. Uh, I came yeah. Thursday morning, showed some people the initial kind of very, very kind of rough prototype. And they're like, yeah, this, this has got legs. That lands. Yeah. Uh, and so did some more work over the weekend. And by Monday, it was... Look, not the final version, but by Monday it was it was usable. MVP was out. It's iterated since. It's probably been less than a month, and it's, it's getting really good reviews from clients and prospects. Yeah, and we're adding more features. I can yep. add features in you know ten minutes, thirty minutes. It's uh, but vibe coding as much as it is looked down upon by maybe the more traditional development yeah. community. Uh, it certainly for me when I have a good understanding of the business problem and at least some development expertise. Yeah, it, or at least what. Well, you know, used to know how to code back in the day. Yep. Uh, it, it's just allowing me to do so much so quickly. The vibe coding thing, I actually thought it would be a much broader or much more popular topic of conversation today, and it hasn't been. Uh, you're possibly the second, maybe the first uh, to, to mention it. Um, so that, that in itself is interesting. So I think there's such a huge opportunity there. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, what else you got? Look, so kind of if we pivot completely, yep. uh, you know, we were doing acquisitions. Uh, there's a lot mm. of work goes on during due diligence. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, one of the one of the things that, that I've built is a, a due diligence GPT that allows me to do a lot of that stuff uh, super quick. And mm. to be honest, it's found stuff that I would not have buried down in, you know, page 37 of a customer contract. Uh, and so, yeah, be able to go through due diligence in that sort of speed with that sort of well. low cost. Uh, super help. So with that, though, much as was with the case, the case with anything in AI, good data, yeah. good outcomes, right? So yeah. I assume that due, due diligence, it's late in the day, I've had so many conversations missing my words completely, but you must have so many great examples of due diligence done well. You must have so much experience to draw from to tell it what you need. That's the trick, right? Oh, uh, it's still that there's some of that. Some of it's also just making sure you're asking and getting the right data. Because you're really, due diligence is about asking for a lot of information, making sure that is at least somewhat in the right format. But now I don't even have to worry about the format as much because I can True. upload it and, and go from there. For me, the trick with any chat GPT type um, uh, implementation is start not by just putting in and expecting to give you the answer, but start by being curious with it and asking really intelligent questions yeah. and go from there. One of my, yeah, probably one of my biggest learnings from this trip is seeing the prompts you used uh, the other day where you basically said, what do you need to know from me in order for you to do this task well? Correct. And then that was a really interesting way of yeah. prompting quite uh, different. I, I generally, I, I set up what I'm trying to do and then I say, so what, what would you need from me uh, to, to do it? Same as the way I talk to a staff person. Stop yeah. asking me questions. This is what I, I don't do. know. What do you need? You know? <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, the other thing I think you've done well with, I don't want to miss it, is the tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so do you want to touch on that or do you want me to call? Yeah, yeah. My idea is when I, when I put an idea on the table, yeah, some people argue with that a little bit. Yeah. But you know, I'll say it sucks just to mess with you, but I, yeah, it's fine. I mean, you're never going to get that, uh, that same uh, level of scrutiny, I think, on my... That's on very my fair. Own. Very fair. And so, uh, and so, yeah, I've got a, um, 
it's just a project in ChatGPT. It's yeah. just got a bunch of custom instructions in there, but it is, it is a summer I can throw something in to kind of go, what do you think about this? And it was like, well, have you thought about these things? You know? Have you done, have you tried to break it? Were you like, uh, uh, tell me, uh, say the earth is round, as I tell me I'm wrong. I, I might just say I oval. But I will be. Yes, good, cool. Yeah. Okay, got it. Just something subjectionally true, girl, tell me I'm wrong. That'd be great. Uh, off the back of you doing that, I then created Ross GPT uh, as my virtual CEO. I'm like, start by assuming I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me why I, this is a bad idea. And I'm like, good, now that I know that, I can adjust it, now I can go. So I'm basically saving you time. You're welcome. There you go. Yeah, look at me go. All right, cool. Uh, I wanna touch on, away from, move on uh, from specific examples more broadly. This is roughly three, three and a half years since ChatGPT.0 or 1.0 launched. Um, AI is omnipresent, we can't escape it. Every meeting we go to, it is spoken about. What are you most excited about in this time and what are you less excited about when it comes to, to the, the world we now live in? Most excited about, look, I, I think that, that we are still actually discovering uh, all we can do with it. And, and mm. I've talked about this a lot and it is, it's, we often go with a business problem and then say, how do I solve it? Whereas I still am, still find myself finding new things where it's like uh i i'm led by what it can do not what i need sometimes yeah okay i, I think that as, as much as that's probably a backwards way to go about it traditionally mm. uh i think there's some really interesting opportunity there people just that they didn't even realize it was a problem that could be solved yeah they didn't even know it was a problem that yeah. it was solved again. so well, I think the great example there is is having uh rolled out ChatGPT to all of our staff connected it to so many apps internally now, yeah. I'm genuinely having ideas I never even thought I needed to solve because it's right. just a thing that maybe is possible now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a weird like synapse connecting situation. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, okay, anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's that. Uh, I guess, actually a couple of examples today. I, I've learned, did you know that the Grok feature is available in the Tesla? D d I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know. And the other thing with our advanced audio um, button on uh, on the app, on yep. phone, yep. if you press the the, a camera button and you can get it to tell you what it sees and start doing that. I didn't uh, know that. I did not know that. I didn't know that until an hour ago. Did it upload something to it? I didn't yeah. realize the... Yeah. The so I've, I've got an example uh, from our conversation with Mark at, uh, at Thread. Yeah. Thread? Yes. Thread, yeah. So, uh, so that was super interesting. So I'm just like, for me, the fact that there are, there's so much more functionality than even, you know, people who are clearly very capable when it comes to technology. Yeah, it's still discovery. Yeah. It's just, so, so we're just scratching this, we're not even getting the other sides, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the other side, you said, what am I, I think you said- what? Negative, yeah. What are you less excited about? Yeah. Look, I'm less excited about the fact that there are a lot of people that are just using ChatGPT out of the box, let's say. Yeah. And then going, here's my, like- It's called work slop, apparently. I heard that today. Right. Well, yeah. it's, it's like, if all I needed was someone to put something in ChatGPT and then tell me what it's about out. I'd like, create a ChatGPT agent to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that the, the challenge is uh, that, yeah, like you said, slop, the wordy, generic- M dashes. All that kind of stuff. Look, maybe the M dash is going to have a comeback. I mean, let's <laughs> let's not put the M dash down. I mean, maybe we're the maybe we're the ones that aren't. My, well, every single conversation today, that's all I've done, just putting M dashes <laughs> down. So if you're telling me now we shouldn't, we have to. We have a lot of work to redo. Anyway, carry on. Um, <clears> so. Yeah, look, I think the the core use of it, yeah. and in you know, and I'm seeing that across organisations, publicly, like consumer, consumer, yeah. Work, yeah. consumer land. I know in in schools they're having challenges with this kind of stuff. Um, it's it's how do you make sure that it's not just time something and get an answer and accept the answer. Yeah. Like that's that's, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a societal challenge almost. Yeah, hundred percent. It's so it's it's easier than ever to be lazy and still get stuff yeah. done, but it's more important than ever to be curious. Right. Look at me go. What a nice wrap up. I'm really proud of myself just, this late in the day. All right. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say while we're together on camera uh, at this lovely event that we're very lucky to have been invited to uh, to do this at? Um, it's always nice to be here with you. Oh, thanks, mate. Oh, <laughs> uh, are you? Uh, yeah, I just, I, it's killing I me. You're fishing for a compliment. But... No, you think that every time we talk. <laughs> yeah, he, for the record, he just told me I looked a little bit like Jack Reacher, so I'm gonna take that to my grave. Anyway, uh, okay, I think that's us. Thank you very much for the chat. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you wanna see more just like that from this series, you can find them on our LinkedIn company page or on our company YouTube page. I also just wanna say a big thank you to the team at ConnectWise and IT Nation for having us involved.